you have your Bibles, I want you to go with me to the book of Ezekiel. And uh, I want to just thank the Lord for, amen, the pellets having us, amen. And um, what a uh, what a uh, move of God tonight. How many, how many know we got hit by the Holy Ghost tonight? Amen. We got Holy Ghost uh, slammed. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I was going to share with you something prophetic that the Lord was giving me regarding uh, this area and um, also what he's doing in Minnesota. And we've been hearing for years that there is going to be a revival that's going to break out here. How many know that we've been hearing that about the fire of the Holy Spirit? And um, the Lord was speaking to me, and uh, I was getting a lot of really powerful things about what God's going to do. But I want to talk about the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, uh, the anointing, amen, and how right now in the, in the day we're living, I, I would say this, I'll say in this region, I'll just say, there's a lot of resistance toward the Holy Spirit, a lot of resistance toward the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues, there's, there's a lot of resistance toward the Spirit moving, um, you know, and there's a there's a, a, a more of a sophistication, kind of an intellectual uh, gospel that doesn't have power. Yeah. It's just a lot of information, yeah. and it makes people feel good. Yeah. makes people feel good, but they're not really being transformed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And um, how many know it's not our works that's going to get us in? There's got to be a transformation Amen. come on of our hearts. Yeah. And only the Holy Spirit can do that. And uh, I, I believe a lot of people are going to be surprised. They thought it was going to be, they thought it was here. God wants it to get down in here and bring transformation. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the gospel has got to get out. And it's only going to be done by the Holy Spirit. But the first thing the Lord was talking to me about was the power of a prophetic anointing. You know, it's good to have prophets in your midst. How many know what I'm saying? It's good, it's good to have prophetic people around you. There are a lot of prophetic people in this house. Amen. You're pastors are both apostolic and prophetic by nature you and um those of you that that belong here and uh but there's other people in this house that have prophetic anointing and um it's important that we amen uh appreciate the prophetic and don't uh you know the bible says don't despise prophesying and things like that amen and uh we need to we need to honor the prophetic because there's a reward that comes with honoring the prophetic amen because prophetic people or prophets or people that are prophetic by nature are kind of bent more towards speaking direct truth in such a way at times that they deal with rejection. Come on, amen. And uh, it's, it's a blessing when you can come into an area and people receive you. Come on, in that prophetic vein. That God starts showing you. Because sometimes the words that we give prophetically are not really, come on, amen, what people want to hear. And uh, I know for myself, uh, moving in the prophetic many years, going in different places, I've, I've dealt with rejection from people because I would get there and God would give me something for the church or give me something for the ministry. I didn't know God was cleaning house, you know, and they would, they gave me the mic. They said, let the Lord use you. Come on, amen. Do what the Lord tell you to do. Come on, Amen. I mean, no, you give a prophet the mic and say, let the Lord use you. Do whatever the Lord tell you to do. Come on, amen. <laughs> you got to be trusting God in that prophet. Come on. That God's going to speak what is necessary for that house and whatever. And uh, so I've been in different environments. And I remember one time I was in a church. It was my first time coming to that church. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to preach on exposing self-promotion. And I was like, Lord, I don't want to preach on that in here. This is my first time at this church. They, that door won't open again if I keep preaching stuff like this. Come on, somebody. <laughs> They're going to think I'm trying to confront somebody. Come on, amen. <laughs> I was, right? <laughs> it was the Holy Spirit confronting people. Come on, amen. <laughs> well, I got up and preached the message and uh, preached that full message. And it was just a regular, you know, kind of laid back service. I prayed for a few people. One woman cried. That was about it. Come on, amen. <laughs> the atmosphere was just kind of like, whoa, you know, whoa, you know, whoa. And after the end, at the end, I, I left. The pastor didn't say anything. I just got in the car and left. He called me when I was going down the road. He says, brother. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> brother. 
And uh, he said, he says, that was a word from God. I said, really? He says, I just got ordained in this church. The board established me as the leader. And there were other people that were in place. And one individual was very angry with me because I got the place and the position. And he hasn't been to church since that whole thing occurred. And guess when he came back? On the day you're preaching. Did y'all miss it? Did y'all caught that? Come on, amen. God gave that word for one person. I mean, everybody, everybody could, could benefit by it, but he was specifically speaking to one individual. And sometimes when the Lord is moving, I'm going to tell you right now, we cannot, don't think it's strange if the word don't sound like, come on, amen. You want to sound God might just go directly, come on, to some specific individual. Come on, amen. He's been known to do that kind of stuff. I remember one time, another time this happened to me, indifferent though, I was in the service and I started speaking in tongues. Now, most people would tell you, don't speak in tongues unless you have an interpreter in the service. <laughs> I mean, no, that's that religious thing will tell you that, right? You better have an interpreter before you speak in tongues. Come on, because it's not edifying and it's not right and it's out of order. And the Apostle Paul said that, right? How many, how many on the day of Pentecost, they didn't know if there was an interpreter? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. It's okay to have order, but you can't order the Holy Spirit. Come on. Amen. amen. And, and just because you don't know there's an interpreter. So I started speaking in tongues. And uh, with the mic just going, rah, 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 rah. You know, something's coming out. I was like, what's coming out of my mouth? <laughs> and th this man was sitting in the back of the service. And he, I got, after I got done, nobody responded to the prophetic thing. I just spoke it out. Nobody responded. The man got up, and he walked across the service to the front, to the door, and he, and he wrote a, his number and gave it to the usher. says, tell that man to call me. Come on, y'all. So he says, do you know Hausa? Hausa? I said, no. He says, it's an African language. He said, you were speaking in Hausa. He says, you just, you was telling me that there was somebody in the church trying to cause division. If they didn't stop it, God was going to bring judgment. You were saying that in that language. Guess who was the person trying to create division? The man that got the interpretation or the translation in that case. God specifically spoke directly to that man. Look at God's love. He hid it in an unknown language that the man, come on, amen, would understand. Come on, how many know God loves us? Come on, amen. Even when he brings correction and rebuke. Hid the, language, hid the message in the, in the man. The man was so convicted, and, and God brought correction to him without him having to be exposed in front of the whole church. Come on, y'all. So don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't despise prophecy. Don't, let, don't stop tongues. Come on, amen. Don't stop the flow of what God wants to do because we, we want God to have freedom and the liberty to do what he wants to do. Amen? amen. One of the things that I want to do, and I'm going to do this quickly, is that um, God wants us to have a clear revelation of what he's saying. Because how many know you get the right word, it will penetrate the darkness? The right word. You know people are preaching all out of their heads, come on, in a lot of churches and ministries. And God wants us to hear revelation directly from him. Come on, amen. amen. How many want to download from heaven right now? Come on, amen. amen. I want to hear clearly. Now, you know what? One word from God can transform your life. You get the right word, it will it'll set a course in your life. It will change you. It will bring you to the place that God has ordained you to be, just hearing the right word from the Lord. And many times I found out with, prophetic, with the prophetic is that re one of the reasons why it's good to have prophetic people in your life is because when they come in your life, it can create a shifting. Come on, amen. And a changing. You can go from one place to the next place. Come on, amen. It can alter the course of your life. It can make things better. Come on, amen. How many know God wants to change some things in your life? He wants to make things better in your life. Amen. amen. And what the Lord told me, because I was in prayer earlier today, and I was, as I was praying, I heard it come to me. And, I, and I, you know, a lot of times people don't talk about this, but do you know the word of God is sacred? The word of God is sacred. It's holy. And you know what? You can take this word and use it the wrong way. And you can try to put your reasoning and your natural mind on this word. Come on. Amen. 
And how many know it's sacred and holy before the Lord? And if you're not careful, you won't be operating out of a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God, but you'll be operating out of your head with the, with the Bible. This is a spiritual book. Come on in. Amen. And, and so I don't expect anybody that's intellectual to understand it. Come on, amen. Because intellectual makes everything try to make it make sense. For example, when they said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Mark 16, it says what? They shall what? They shall what? Speak with new, no, it shall, take, it shall cast out devils, number one, right? And then next one, they shall speak with what? New tongues. You know what an intellectual said? Oh, that means that you just you used to curse, but you don't curse anymore. Are y'all catching what I'm saying? It's all supernatural, people. <laughs> Come on, amen. It's, all, it's something you can't do. <laughs> it's not something. See, some people can just make, can, can, can make themselves better and just can change some of those things that they say. But how many know God knows what's going on in the heart of a person? Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, can change and transform you. But what I want to talk about was the Holy Spirit and how he affected Ezekiel. I want you to look at uh, Ezekiel 1, verse um, 28. I'm going to look at actually the last part of that verse. So when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice of one speaking. And he said unto me, that might be verse 1 in chapter 2. Yeah, I think it's verse 1, yeah. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. He said to him, stand on your feet, right? He said, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Now, in this passage, you know that Ezekiel was pretty much under the influence. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, under the influence. Matter of fact, many times when prophets in the Old, in the Old Testament would have encounters, and even in the New Testament, you see, whenever they would have encounters with angelic beings or the Lord would come, they would be knocked to the ground, completely powerless. That's why a lot of the visions that people have today, I'm not sure if it's the Lord, them seeing the Lord, seeing these, you know, visions, because it would level you. Come on, amen, if the Lord came in his glory in that level. Come on, amen. It would level you. Come on, amen. And so you see, in, you see here in this passage, he tells him to stand up on your feet, I'm going to speak to you. But then the Spirit had to do something. Notice what he said, the Spirit entered me. Some of the Spirit entered me. And when he spoke to me, he set me on my feet. Wait a minute. He told him to do something, and then he came into it and empowered him to do it. Come on, amen. Oh, come on, come on, come on. That's a good one right there. Come on. And he says, and he set him on my feet, and I heard him um, who spoke to me. So here's an important thing. I believe that we don't hear enough about being possessed by the Holy Spirit. We hear a lot about being possessed by demons having demonic influence, but we don't hear enough about being possessed by the Holy Spirit. And in the Old Testament, come on, we, we know it was very rare, a very rare experience for people to have the Spirit unless they were a prophet, come on, or a king, come on, or a priest, because God only known it three different types of individuals. So it was a very rare thing for the Spirit, come on, to enter in and, or come upon and begin to use. Do you understand how blessed we are in the New Covenant Revelation? That the Spirit of God, come on, amen, has come now on the inside of us. Whoo, hallelujah. The new covenant did something awesome. Come on, amen. It provided a way for the Holy Spirit to enter into every single one of us who believes in Jesus. My goodness. I'm, I'm getting all excited by myself. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. So if you look now, go to that... Um, Let's see what verse I want to go to now. Go to, um, uh, let's see here. I, I'll, I'll do this first. Go to Joel, the book of Joel. And uh, I'm going to talk about the spirit because I, I believe that God is going to release his spirit in greater dimensions. Come on, in the day we're living. Amen. I believe the times of refreshing are coming from the presence of the Lord out of Acts, the second chapter. In Joel, the second chapter, before I read that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a, just keep your Bible there in Joel. We'll go there in just a moment. Uh, Ezekiel was in the realm of visions. He was in the realm of visions because he was infilled by the Spirit. One of the ways that you know you're filled with the Spirit is that God will start showing you things. Come on, amen. God will start giving you visions. He'll start giving you revelation. He'll start giving you dreams. Come on, amen. When you know you're filled with the Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, that's one of the end-time prophetic words 
in Joel. What does it say in Joel? In Joel, the second chapter, in verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now, I love this because it says on all flesh. Here's the scope of how God sees things. He don't just want to pour his spirit out on a few people. He want to pour his spirit out on all flesh. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. All right. And he says here, uh, and he says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So one of the indications you're filled with the spirit is that you prophesy. It's not just for the prophet to prophesy. God wants the body, the whole body to have a spirit of prophecy on the inside of them. So when people don't understand, when we say come to the uh, class where we can teach about the prophetic, you don't realize that this is actually your calling. Come on, amen. God is calling you into the prophetic. Every believer, come on, has a spirit of prophecy on the inside of them because if you're born of God, you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. That's Revelations 19.10. You have the spirit of prophecy. Somebody look at the person next to you and say, you got the spirit of prophecy. And <laughs> Tell them. Come on, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he says here, and oh man, verse, uh, and that same verse 20, verse, and old men shall dream dreams, and watch this, and young men shall what? See visions. Now understand, God says, I'm going to release, come on, dreams to the older men. I'm going to release visions. Come on, amen. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I've been doing a lot of dreaming. Lord, help me. I want to, uh, uh, anyway, y'all missed it, but anyway. <laughs> I want, yeah, break, thank you. Listen, when, 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 when you got the spirit in you, you're going to prophesy, you're going to dream dreams, you're going to see visions. Come on, amen. And the Bible talks about that even the handmaids, even the, the ministers or leaders are going to prophesy. That means that, that means that you can have leaders that don't prophesy. You can have servants in the church or ministries in the church that don't prophesy. But God's, come on, in the New Covenant, New Testament, no way in the, nowhere in that word do you, are you op, you're, to be absent with the Spirit. The Spirit should be present in your life. You should be functioning, come on, amen, in the Spirit of God. Somebody say hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. We need to ask God for his breath. We need to ask God to breathe on us. We need to ask God to stir us up, to activate us. And part of this weekend is to activate the prophetic on the inside of you where you will start prophesying. Come on, amen. Where you will start prophesying. Where you will start seeing visions. Where you will start dreaming dreams. Come on. Where the Spirit of God will come on your children. Somebody say hallelujah. I believe that the outpouring of the Spirit is missing because the Spirit is not being poured out on the children. Something's wrong because the children should be seeing visions. The children should be experiencing, come on, the spirit of prophecy. You got churches where people are saying they're having revival, but ain't nothing happening to the next generation. Oh, I'm preaching right now. We need to see this thing go on, come on, where it goes uh, to every, uh, uh, every generation, where the Bible says for one generation will shout the praise of God to the next generation. It should be affecting every generation. I love it when Jesus comes suddenly to the temple. How many remember that he comes to the temple and he, and he takes a strap and he starts beating out the money changers? Come on, amen. And turning the tables out. And the scripture says they sold doves. Isn't that powerful? They sold doves. They were selling the Holy Spirit. That's a type of the spirit, the exchange. It was like a, a, a spirit of, of covetousness and greed in the temple. Come on, it was not supposed to be the right, that was not supposed to be the exchange. Freely you have received, freely give. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. In God's house, a house of prayer, a house of worship. Come on, amen. It's a place where God, come on, amen. This is not a merchandising place. Come on, amen. But that spirit operates in the churches today. You find people buying position. Come on, they don't tell, they don't, nobody knows about it, but the persons that make them, that give the most money, come on, can have the most influence in churches. You've got a lot of that going on. What, what, how come the Holy Spirit is not able to do what he wants to do? It's because we don't understand this, that it's supposed to be spirit-led, spirit-run. We're supposed to be spirit-filled. Come on. We're supposed to have the Spirit. We're supposed to be full of the Spirit. Somebody say, full of the Spirit. Oh, my goodness. This is a good word, y'all. All right, look at verse, uh, uh, verse uh, 29. And my ser men's servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour up my Spirit in those days. And he says, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. And I watch his blood and fire and pillars of smoke. My goodness, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Now, this is before the Lord's come. The, 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 and we've seen some of these manifestations or, or symbols of this manifestation. But I believe that we're going to see more of this like we've never seen before. Now, I've, I've, grew, I've grew up in, uh, uh, you know, a Pentecostal church. 
and I've seen the manifestations of the Spirit. And, and uh, several years ago, I got born again in an um, uh, uh, evangelist meet, evangelistic meeting. A man by the name of Don Hansen, an evangelist who uh, he would go on 40-day fast regularly. It was part of his, his, his ministry calling. He would go on fast for like 40 days and 40 nights. He did this quite a bit. And he had a lot of signs and wonders that would follow his ministry. So when he would get up and preach and he would start ministering, all of a sudden people who would come in, and if they had, like, for example, like uh, uh, been operated on and they would, they would put uh, replacement parts in them, like metal and different things like that, in his services, stuff would melt in people's bodies. They would go back to the doctor and have new bone. This is the kind of manifestation. See, we don't see this manifestation that much anymore because people are not paying the price. Come on, amen. To live in this kind of realm of glory. Come on, amen. And of course, you got to be called to it as well. God calls people to it because there's a certain cross you have to carry. Come on, to walk in those kind of realms of the anointing. Come on, amen. Uh, I've seen, come on, the spirit move in such a way where the, the anointing oil of the Lord would come on everybody's hands in the service. All of us were sitting there and we would pull our hands up and oil would be on our fingers, all of our hands. In the service, it would be manifested. The Spirit of God would come down and just would be there. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And would manifest like this. Now, how I many know a lot of times people get their eyes on that? We're not trying to get your eyes on that. I'm just trying to tell you that this is part of the signs that follow. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Signs that follow. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The move of God used to happen so many uh, years ago. They would talk about this in some of uh, uh, A.A. Allen's meetings, who was an, an evangelist, healing evangelist. The scripture says, and not scripture says, they, the books I was reading and some of the people told me testimonies. I even got video clips of this, of, of people talking about these things. But they would have manifestations where the fire of the Lord would appear over the top of tents. And they thought they would call the fire department. Come on, Amen. People would call the fire department because they'd be going by. They'd go get the fire department, and they would get there and come to find out there was no fire. Come on, no natural fire. It was the Holy Ghost fire that would manifest. Come on, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Come on, there would be services where the glory cloud would start coming into the service. Come on, amen. We're not seeing this anymore. Come on, amen, like we used to, where the glory cloud would come into the church and start manifesting. Ooh, Hallelujah. I want to see this. This is part of the signs of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God manifests this thing again in our churches, in our gatherings. Come on, amen. How many want God to do it? Hallelujah. Okay, so here, let me, let me hurry up. Come on, finish this up here. Uh, uh, jo uh, Jesus, go to the book of John real quick here. St. John. St. John. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the outpouring of your spirit. Yes. We want it. We want it, Lord. Yes. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that gives, who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. These are the words of Jesus. He says, the spirit is what gives life. Your Bible, come on, is a dead book until the Holy Spirit gets on it. Amen. Come on, amen. It won't produce. There are people who have all kind of knowledge of Scripture, but they don't have any demonstration of the power of God in their lives. Jesus said, the words I'm speaking, they are spirit and they are life. If your motivation is wrong, it will cause you to miss, come on, amen, uh, uh, the, the move of the Holy Spirit. And God wants to get us full of his Holy Spirit again. Go to Ezekiel, come on, 37. I'm almost done. I want to do this here and start praying for people because I believe God is wanting to do some of that before we uh, close out. But in Ezekiel 37... It talks about the hand of the Lord, uh, verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. How many remember that story? Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Come on, amen. How I many that was the best answer you could come up with? Amen. And again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. 
Isn't that something how prophecy brings sudden moves of the Holy Spirit? Come on, amen. And it also causes shaking or a noise. The bones begin to come together. And indeed, as I looked at verse four, uh, 8, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. And he said to them, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds of O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Now, I, I could go further and further here, but I want to say this is talking about the children of Israel being brought to their land. How many know that? This is a, a prophetic word that was given concerning them being brought into their land and God restoring that nation. But how many know it's also a double prophetic meaning because it's talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, amen. Many times we need, come on, to be breathed into. Come on, amen, because there's dryness. Come on. How many know there's dryness? And God wants to deal with the dryness in this region. This, the, the Spirit of God is not able to operate because there's a lot of dry, come on, and people. But we need prophetic voices and prophetic people who will pray and who will prophesy, come on, amen, and call for the wind of God to come and begin to cause those dead bones, come on, to come back together again and begin to live. God wants to give you new and fresh assignments because many times people have lost their dream, they've lost their vision, they've lost the revelation of what God called, and many times God will set you in front of prophetic people and they will begin to speak to you and a fresh wind of God will begin to blow and begin to cause you to be re come on reborn into what God has called you to do Woo, come on somebody hallelujah now I look at Ezekiel 36 it's going to confirm it and now you know this verse fits us Ezekiel 36 and 26 it says I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. And you will keep the judgments and do them. My judgment, do them. Then shall you dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your, your God. See, he's saying, I'm going to put my spirit. He's talking about the children of Israel. But here, understand this revelation. We are the church and that same spirit. Come on. And the Bible prophesied to us that when Jesus came into us, he gave us a heart of flesh now. Come on, amen. He gave us a heart of flesh. He has re he's, he's circumcised our heart, and he's purified our hearts so that we can contain the Spirit of God. Amen. Woo! Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I want more of the Holy Ghost. I want more of the Spirit of God. Come on, amen. See, God wants to, us to walk in his statutes, but he wants to do it through us. Go back to Ezekiel real quick here. Ezekiel, um, um, I'm sorry, we already there. Ezekiel 1. I thought I was somewhere else. Ezekiel 1, back to Ezekiel 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you look at verse 17, 117, and they're talking about the wheels. The, the, how many remember the, the wheels and the different contraptions that were, they were, they were in, the, in the air? And the scriptures talk about the angels that were with these. And they, called, they were called the living creatures. But if you look at verse 17, when they moved, they went toward any, they went uh, toward any one of four directions. They did not turn aside when they went. As for their rims, they were uh, so high, they were awesome, and their and rims were full of eyes and around and all around the four of them. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Now look at this. Wherever the spirit wanted to go. They went because they were this, they were there the spirit went and the wheels were lifted together with them for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those, when those went, these went, when those stood, these stood. And it says when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Understand the spirit wants to get inside your wheels. Come on somebody. He wants to get inside your, 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 what makes you, your mechanisms, your motivations, your desires. He wants to move, come on, amen, the wheels of your heart in the direction of what he wants to do. There is such a realm of revelation. When we allow the Holy Spirit to come in, he'll begin to change the way we think. Come on, the way we process stuff. Come on, he'll begin to change the course of your life where you thought you were going to retire. And he will shift your thinking into a calling and a purpose that he had for your life. Or he'll show you, you might have set out a career and a direction that you wanted to go, but the Holy Spirit says, no, I have something different I want to do with you. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, God is in this place. Amen. Notice how synchronized they were. They were moving together. See, I believe that when the Spirit is really moving, you're going to see more unity in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. 
when the spirit is really moving, you're going to see more unity in the church. Not unity we have to come on, make people, put on programs and try to get people involved. I believe the spirit of God is going to bring, a, a, there's going to be a supernatural unity. Come on, that only God can bring people together. How many understand that when the Azusa Street Revival broke out in the 1906, the scripture says, I keep saying the scripture because I I'm, I'm love the word, but it, it said in, 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 the, in the studies that uh, concerning uh, the Azusa Street Revival that there were people from all over. Come on, amen. There were people from, from Europe, people from, all, from the Hispanic, uh, the people from the, uh, the African nations, people. They were coming. All these people were coming. Why? Because the Spirit of God was drawing them. Real revival is not taking place unless all nations are starting to come together. Come on, somebody. All nations are coming together. It's part of a sign. If you look in the book of Acts, the second chapter, verse 1, when, when the Bible says the sun that came a sound from heaven, right? A rushing mighty wind. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Fill the house. That wind came in, and do you know you got born again by the wind? In John 3, it says that the Spirit blows where it listed. Come on, amen. You don't know which way it comes, but this is how you're born of the Spirit. Come on, amen. It's by the wind of God. Come on, amen. The wind of God. See, and it, how many know that Elijah, come on, he had a whirlwind come on with him. Elijah had a whirlwind. The scripture, yeah, scripture says this, and thank God, amen. Uh, 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 that the spirit would take up Elijah, and, and his, uh, some of the people knew it. They would go, uh, don't you know, uh, you know, uh, your master could, they told Elijah, don't you know your master could be actually, you know, just caught up to a mountain somewhere? You know, the spirit would take him at times. This man had a whirlwind with him. Come on, I believe that prophets have the whirlwind anointing come on up on their lives. Come on, amen. To translate people into new places in God. To shift things, to change things. I believe that God wants to shift your life tonight. Come on, amen. Confirming this thing. So here's some of the enemies of the wind of God. Pride is one of the main enemies of the wind of God. Because if you look in Job and you read about the Leviathan, remember the Leviathan, uh, 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 the great sea serpent? Leviathan scripture says that he had, he had scales that, that the wind, it actually says that the wind couldn't pass through him. Come on, somebody. Pride restricts the flow, come on, of the Spirit of God. Come on, amen, in your life. How many want to get rid of that pride? Come on, amen. So the Spirit of God can begin to move in your life. Also uh, connected with that is Simon the Sorcerer. Uh, in the book, book of Acts, the eighth chapter, Simon the Sorcerer, he wanted to buy the Holy Spirit. It almost cost him his life. Come on, amen. Merchandising, come on, amen, hinders the Holy Spirit. It stops the Holy Spirit from operating. When we try to, come on, we try to uh, do a carnal thing, merchandising and buying, come on, amen. It, it, it tries to, uh, what that does is stops the Spirit from flowing. Here's another one, the Spirit of Python. Acts, the 16th chapter, talks about a, a girl who had a, a damsel who had a spirit of python in her. That's a, a spirit, a, a familiar spirit, but also a spirit that, that uh, it tells futures. Come on, it does different things. But what it is, is divination, what it does is it, uh, the spirit of python is like this. What it does, uh, how many know what a python does? It restricts, right? So if a python wraps around you, it's going to stop you from breathing. That's its whole intent. So it keeps constricting until you don't have any more breath. Okay, how many know that sin can be your python? Disobedience to God can be your python. Come on, and it can begin to squeeze the life out of you where you will no longer have the spirit operation in your life. There are many people who are missing the spirit of God in their life, and they're wondering, why don't I have more of the spirit of God? Why can't I sense more of God's presence? You need to check these areas in your life. Do you have blatant sin in your life that you have not repented of? Come on, amen. Right, and because, listen, we can prophesy, we can pray for you, we can give you prophetic words, but understand, God wants to visit you, and he wants to make his habitation in your life. God wants to move you past, come on, amen, just getting, come on, freebies and handouts from heaven. He wants you to actually become a part of his kingdom. Come on, amen, and start receiving from heaven directly and learning how to live in that realm. Yes. Oh, man, that's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, translate me, Lord. Now, I, I believe this with all my heart that, you know, when God he translated, uh, remember Philip uh, in, the, in uh, Philip the Evangelist in the book of Acts, also the 8th chapter, the scripture says that Philip was caught up and he was brought to a whole nother place. I believe that the Holy Spirit, when we start cooperating with God, come on, amen, and learning, I believe he's going to start returning these manifestations back in the church where people are going to be caught up and going to be in a whole nother place preaching the gospel. 
Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because they're, they're learning the flow of the Spirit. They're learning to live in the Spirit. I believe God wants to bring that in here tonight. I believe he wants to manifest that thing in here tonight. I believe he wants to plant seed in you to begin to believe for these things to begin to happen. Come on, somebody. Somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Translate us, Lord. Take us to another place. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And the last thing that I want to talk about is this. And, uh, and, and uh, this is partly, I believe, it, with the young people and the younger generation. I believe this, that the younger generation, this generation we're dealing with right now, it looks as if it's almost hopeless. Come on, y'all. How many hear what I'm saying? But we were in prayer the other night, and my daughter was there. We were all praying, uh, Brian and, and my wife, all of the, the family. And different ones in the church, we were there praying, and the Lord started bringing up this revelation about Lazarus. Come on, amen. And I'm telling you, I believed, because I believe this, that, that Lazarus, his name means God helps. Come on, somebody, God helps. And, and, and so when, when Jesus called Lazarus, come on, from the grave, come on, amen, I believe that was symbolic of this younger generation that we're calling back from the grave. Come on, amen. Where the enemy would say to this generation is dead. Come on, amen. They've been, they've been dead and it's not, it looks hopeless. I'm going to tell you right now, I believe with all my heart that this generation is coming out of the grave. Come on, amen. This generation is resurrecting out of the grave. This thing was burning in my spirit. When you start reading what happened with him, when, when he, was, he was dead for, for about three days, three to four days, he was dead. Come on, amen. Jesus purposely let him die so that he could manifest his glory. I believe that he's, he's allowed these things to happen with this generation, but he's about to raise up some, some ones out of this generation who are going to be, a, come on, not afraid. They're going to be bold. Come on, amen. And they're going to speak what thus saith the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. So I'm decreeing right now, young people, awaken into your destiny. Come on, amen. That you will no longer be, come on, in that, come on, that place of death, but you will be a, a resurrected and awakened and come into your place. My goodness, say the Spirit of God. I believe that God has given me to prophesy that, that there's coming a new, come on, fresh wave of the Spirit to the next generation. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more of this. Come on, amen. Where they're, come on, uh, addicted to uh, video games and, and bound up. Come on, amen, with pornography. Come on, and on the internet all the time. Come on, amen. Being driven, come on, by social media and cannot function. No more of this. I believe the devil, that's, I believe it's divination. I believe that's the spirit of Python. I believe the devil's trying to suck the life out of the, so you can't spend time in the presence of God. Come on, the older generation, we have something to do, and I think we need to be calling, come on, to this younger generation, Lazarus, come forth. Come on, amen. And we need to be prepared because we're going to have to remove grave clothes. We're going to have to unstrip them, come on, of things that they've been, come on, involved in. If we're not pursuing the Lord, if we're bound by the same things they're bound by, come on, amen, we're going to miss, come on, this next generation of what God wants to do. we got to let it go and come into this fresh move of what God wants us to do in the earth. My God, somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want more, Jesus. Uh, and see, the Holy Spirit, he says he's able, come on, to do this. And he just needs somebody that will agree with him and cooperate with him. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God can move. Now, I, I'll give you a quick testimony here. Some of you know I shared my testimony how I got born again. Uh, you know, I got born again back in 1978. That's a long time ago, y'all. Come on. Amen. And I, I was going to this uh, junior high school. Then I went to the, to the, uh, uh, to the uh, Central High School in Minneapolis. We were actually the last gra graduating class in 82. Some of y'all, that sounds like a long time ago. Some of y'all, I know. Some of y'all, what y'all, that's nothing for y'all. But uh, the Lord started dealing with me because I was in the I was in the classroom as a, as a, as a high schooler. I was in the, actually in the cafeteria, and I was hanging out with some uh, young men. I knew the Lord. I knew the Lord. Uh, but I wasn't, you know, I was kind of getting pulled. You know how you get pulled. You hang around the wrong people, you start getting pulled. And they were telling dirty jokes and stuff. I was laughing, you know. Y'all looking at me like y'all never laughed. At me. Uh -huh. I was all under the table laughing. And you know what? I heard God speak to me while I was laying on the floor laughing. He said, what are you doing down there? 
I mean, just like that. I went, ooh, like that. I mean, the fear of God came on me. I stood up in front of them young men, and, and a boldness came on me. I said, I'm never coming back in here until I find believers that I can fellowship with. I walked out of, I walked out of that cafeteria, never returned. Come on, somebody. I started walking down the hall, right? Some guy was following me around, kind of joking around, bothering me, and pushed me into a classroom at lunchtime, and guess what? They was having Bible study. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody say hallelujah. They was having Bible study. I, I walked in and I said, oh, God. Y'all can see me right now. I was like, oh, God. All of a sudden, the Lord started connecting me with these people. I ended up becoming the leader of the Bible study group. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Spirit of God started to move in our high school. Hallelujah. I mean, the Spirit of God started to move in our high school because I got bold. And my, my teacher, my, uh, I should say my principal, uh, it was a female principal, she said, Calvin, I know what you're doing in that room. And she just walked. Come on, somebody. The Lord gave me favor. Y'all know what happened? Channel 4 News, WCCO. Come on, somebody. Came down. Y'all need to help me. They said, we need to figure out what's going on at this school. We've been hearing that these children are, are overcoming things without taking drugs. I mean, anymore. They're not doing drugs anymore. They're not in the disc. They're, they're getting out of this lifestyle. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And you know what happened? They started filming what was happening in the Bible study. And the folks was getting slain in the spirit. <laughs> Bam. They were filming it. I said, Bam. Bam. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit was moving in our classrooms. People were getting saved between class bells. They would run down the hall and grab me before I go into class and say, can I receive Jesus? Come on, somebody. We started having uh, uh, out on the, on the lawn at recess time or whatever, lunchtime. We took a lunch time. Lunch, we recessed for elementary. That was in high school. We would take out that lunchtime, and we would go out, come on, on that lawn, and we would start praying for people. And one young man got filled with the Holy Ghost right out there, come on, on the lawn, was laying out there. He said, I feel something tingly. <laughs> i never forget that. He said, I feel something tingly. And he started speaking in tongues. He ended up being a powerful intercessor and a preacher. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Oh, when the Spirit of God gets on you, he will get on other people. If you will allow the Holy Spirit to really take over in your life, he will start coming off on other people. If he can take charge of your life. Come on, I'm not just talking about I got an experience, but I'm keeping it to myself. See, if you got an experience, I'm keeping it to myself. If you keep it to yourself. When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was 13 and 14 years old, you know what? Everybody that I came in contact with in school, I didn't care if they even understood it. They knew I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Y'all going to laugh at me. I was going, na, 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 na. They said, what's wrong with you? I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I would go up to the, to the different Asian people. I don't know They said, what you, what you speak? I got the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Y'all just looking at me funny. Saints, if you're not afraid, and if you're bold with this thing, Holy Spirit will get off on people. Come on, amen. He will start getting off on them. They'll start getting convicted. Come on, amen. They'll start wanting to understand what's going on, and then you can preach the gospel to them, and the Spirit of God will transfer. Come on to them. I want a transference. Come on, amen. I want a greater transference of the anointing. Somebody say, Lord, make me bold.